Uh, welcome everyone to this week's episode of Jim and Java. I'm Jim Dempsey, your host. Well, welcome everyone. It is so good to be here. We're starting to move more and more into spring, starting to see the uh, the summer on the horizon. I hope many of you are getting ready to have some time off, get a little vacation. I know a number of your partners probably are. I continue to encourage people to use this summertime as a great way to try and get to your partners uh, when their schedules aren't as busy. Uh, oftentimes a mistake is made that we think that summertime is not a good time to get our partners and they are traveling, but generally their work schedule is more relaxed and they are a little bit more open with their schedule to meet. So I hope you're taking advantage of some of those opportunities that exist. Well, let's dive right into our first question today. Our question today is from Steve in Minneapolis, Minnesota. And Steve asks, why is fundraising so important to nonprofits? Well, Steve, uh, I thought that was a very interesting question because, of course, a simple answer is that it's very difficult for nonprofit organizations to exist without fundraising. But I really thought maybe there was something more, something deeper in your question there. And uh, that may or may not be true. But I just wanted to really reinforce just how the fact that fundraising and development seems to be the one area that, that nonprofit organizations miss on. It seems to be an area where we feel like we are trained and equipped in our cause and what we do and how to accomplish our cause. But fundraising is an area where we feel like we're so ill-equipped. And by human nature, when we feel inadequate or ill-equipped, uh, you can go one of two ways. You can panic and just put that to the side and put bury your head in the sand and pretend that that problem or their weakness doesn't exist, or you can go and get yourself trained. And so it is so important from my standpoint to get yourself trained in the area of how to do fundraising. Uh, I would love it for every organization to get past the idea that fundraising is a necessary evil. I don't think that's ever going to happen, that everyone is going to feel that way. But I would like for everyone who watches this channel and everyone who is part of our broadcast to be able to at least feel more comfortable about fundraising, more equipped uh, on how to do fundraising, and that you can really... Um, do more than just survive, but you can maybe even thrive in this area. Would I love it that everyone feels well-equipped and feels confident in the area of fundraising? Absolutely. And do I believe that people will love it like I do? I don't know if you'll ever get there uh, or if anyone uh, will be able to just say they really love to do fundraising because even I struggle at times with picking up the phone to emailing, responding, especially when they're challenging things. But Steve, from the standpoint of why is fundraising important, it's very much, I've used the analogy that your organization could be uh, a Ferrari or it could be a Buick or it could be a Volkswagen sitting in a garage, whatever your organization, whatever the similarity is to the car. That vehicle was made to be on the road and made to not just sit there, but to move and to even speed along the highways at a reasonable pace. And so the only way that can happen is for that vehicle to have fuel. And from this, the analogy of fundraising, we know that money is the fuel that is going to fuel that vehicle, fuel your organization. And the money in most cases comes from individuals. Yes, we get it from foundations, but even foundations are made up of individuals. Yes, we get money sometimes from the government, and but that money, even that, there's relationships involved in there. But certainly with personal relationships, it is so important that you really get to know the people who are interested in your cause and interested in what they're what you're doing. Find those individuals that have a heart and a passion for what you're doing. 
you got involved, whether you were the founder or just came along 10, 15, 20 years after the founder. There was a reason why you got involved in your organization. It was most likely because you had a heart and an interest for this cause. Find other people like you. Find people who are willing to invest and be involved. Will they be willing or able to invest the amount of time that you invest? Probably not, but they can invest in other ways. They can invest financially. I've used the acrostic, labor, influence, finances, and expertise, the life acrostic. They uh, may not be able to give the labor, but they can give their finances. They might not be able to give the finances, but they can give their expertise. They might not be able to give expertise, but they can give their influence and influence others to give. So it's really important that you see fundraising and development as being an integral part of your total plan, perspective, and strategy for the mission of your organization. It shouldn't be that you have projects and programs that meet the needs of your audience. You've got to really see your fundraising efforts as part of that overall strategy of accomplishing your mission. It is just one more way that you are going to accomplish your mission. And it's not just about raising funds, it's raising friends. Because the closer people are to you and your organization, the more they're going to want to give. So make sure that you have a good understanding of fundraising. That's things like watching this channel, following me on Instagram, following us on, the, on our Facebook group, Development Effectiveness Strategies, going out to other sites, reading books that are helpful, and I'll be doing a video uh, in the next couple months on good books that I recommend in fundraising. And so all those kinds of things are so important when it comes to understanding why fundraising is important to a nonprofit. So Steve, I hope that helped. If you aren't already a subscriber, it's important for you to know that 70% of those people who watch this channel on a regular basis never subscribe to that channel. We really need you as part of this community. It really helps us when you subscribe because it gets this message out to more people. More subscribers means that YouTube gets this out to more people and that broadens our community and just makes our impact so much bigger. So please subscribe to this channel. Follow us on Instagram at Dev Effectiveness Strategies, on Twitter at Dev Strats, and use the hashtag Jim, Jim and Java. And as always, it is our goal to help you increase income, and reach the goal of becoming fully funded. Thanks a lot. We'll see you in the next video.